Bueno, un poco de español para los que hablan español. I hope you know he's gonna be there. Papacito. Perfect. Ten to ten. Papacito. Eso. <laughs> hey guys, we're here with Rita, aka Dominican Blades. Aka que lo que. <laughs> que lo que. Él sabe. <laughs> And uh, we're gonna do head shape today. Head shape today from Dubai. This is like very satisfying. Even better when the wind is blowing, <laughs> it's crazy. It's like literally self-cleaning for myself. Normally start from the back. Um, I tend to go against the hair, just so it makes it easier, so it cuts a little bit more, mm -hmm. and then it makes it easier for me to use the blade after. And because it's a head shape, so we want to make it smooth as possible. People are very curious. <laughs> I guess it's not every day you see somebody shaving their head in a, at the beach, yeah? <laughs> okay, so nearly there. How long have you been shaving your head? So, I, funny enough, so I started two years ago. Um, I'm not, like, I didn't start as a barber, so my brother from Dominican Republic, he's a barber. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been around him you know, when he was cutting hair, so I learned with him. 
and then in London, even though I had my nine to five job, um, I was doing it on the side just because it's a passion. But then it started kind of like being kind of fun when I, you know, when it was COVID, when COVID hit. And so then since then, like obviously, you know, all my mates uh, in the house were like, oh, can you shave my hair? All the barbers were closed and stuff. So basically like use and abuse, you know? <laughs> so since then I was like, oh, you know, I actually like this. Mm. So I'll continue doing it on the side. And since then, then I moved to Dubai and then I said, you know, I'm not going back to the boring nine to five job. And then I just pushed for it and I said, okay, I'm going to build my own brand. I'm going to start. Uh, I moved six months ago, ago here um, and I already have a quite a small clientele, but I think for six months is quite good. I feel like Dubai is a place where like if you push, you work hard, you will get like you will achieve the goals, you know, but obviously nothing comes easy. It's just uh, pushing, going for it. And so, yeah, and then I've met a few people, like uh, Latinos, uh, which actually do barbering as well. Dubai? Oh, many. 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 Trust me, I mean, Latinos you can find them anywhere. Like, <laughs> it's like, like little, I don't know, birds, like everywhere. It's mm. like, it's crazy. So I found, um, I went to this uh, beauty uh, festival, and that was a month ago. And I realized that I wanted to go because it was this guy, uh, his name is uh, Erod, uh, he's Puerto uh, Rican, uh, one of my idols. Uh, I mean, you know, I treat everybody fairly, like he's a big guy, but I'm like, he's a person like me. So I just literally, I went, I saw him, I approached him, talked to him a little bit, and then met other people. So the few friends that I made, uh, which are from, a guy from Venezuela, then a guy from England actually, that has a barbering um, business. And then since then I just connected with people and then from that then another person and then another person and that's how I work here. Go, yeah. Yes, so I think for people that come here, it's not like in the UK that you approach people uh, like sending your CV or whatever. Mm -hmm. Here it's about networking. So I think like when you go out to events or I just talk to people and then from that something might come out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, so six months in Dubai, few months with the barber in Dubai, but in total two years. Uh, yeah. Nice. And here okay. we are. Now. Yeah. <laughs> here we are. Okay, so I'm just gonna start. Mirella, ¿me pasas una toalla? Por favor. Solo una toallita. La que está. Que está ahí adentro, adelante. Bueno, un poco de español para los que hablan español. No sé, me hace, mira, yo soy dominicana, pero mi accent es de España. <risa> Un poco raro, aunque un mix, mitad italiana, mitad dominicana, entonces me imagino que eso es lo que pasa cuando eres mix, tu acento es mix. Pero bueno, para que luego no digan, uh, dominicano, pero qué acento es raro. Porque you know when I meet people, they're like, oh, you're not dominican, your accent is different. And I'm like, well, you know, that's what happens when you grow up in different countries. Mix. Yeah. It's the same thing over here. Yeah, many mixed people, right? Mm. Mm. And obviously you get like so many different accents and stuff, especially like uh, with English. Yeah. I think it's really um, very confusing, uh, especially for someone that maybe start like uh, learning English. It's hard. Cause it's very broken English. Yeah, broken English. But I'll tell you something. In the UK, is, I mean, in London, for example, obviously it's the nature of the city. There's so many different cultures and so, you from Italy or Spain or whatever or France, you go there thinking I'm gonna learn British English. It's not how it works. Like it's not like that. You realize when you get there and you're like, um, this is not what I've been sold, you know, like uh but then obviously you realise that slowly then your British uh, British accent or like London accent mm. actually I don't know, you, you don't realise but like you have it. Like it's a bit it's a bit strange but I would recommend if you want really like British accent I'll go up north and you will learn British accent, <laughs> not in London. <laughs> okay.
to get a light from there. We have our friend over there filming us. use a new light because you know I don't want to say my like, negative things but <laughs> hygiene guys hygiene it's something like um, uh, it's very tricky like you know like when you go to a barber I think you trust you trust the process you trust the barber and also you're assuming that the hygiene is always first um, I mean some people say oh it's just cutting hair yes but if you use the same blade with many people and there's actually it's people not that do that i mean it depends where you go i guess that's crazy so you know we're not picky here but i think when it comes to that i don't think i'm gonna leave from here <laughs> no but I like you know, it's like you can get it it depends yeah. so uh, maybe me i'm picky i'm like if i go somewhere mm -hmm. which i don't really go anywhere anymore because i do my own hair mm -hmm. but then you want to make sure that there is a hygiene you know because a blade is a blade. So. Okay. just like pulling a little bit of the skin just to avoid any cut mm -hmm. um, but I mean if you have a barber this is basic Feel it too harsh on you, or no, you're fine? It's just some shaking. Just Cold? Try, no, no. Ah, okay. Try to stay still. <laughs> I'm not sure it's, it's not too cold. Too much focus. But yeah, I'm sure it's not cold. It's like mm -hmm. 28 degrees, guys. <laughs>
Latino people over here? Where are they mostly from? So, so far, what I found out, there's a lot of Venezuelan, mm. a lot of uh, Colombians. Colombians, uh, I've actually never met a Dominican yet, but I'm assuming there are a few, but in general, more Venezuelan and Colombians. In, uh, well, I'll probably say South American, don't get angry guys, but I think South American, is that what you say for Argentinians? Because obviously, I mean, it's tricky, you know, because we say like Latinos are the Colombianos, the Venezuelan, Dominicano, Boricuas, you know, and obviously South America, which is, yes, Colombia is still in South America, but I think like Argentina don't de really define themselves as Latinos, but there is a lot of Argentinians here. And actually my first friend I made here, she's from Argentina from uh, Buenos Aires so yeah it's something that you never uh, kind of like think when you come from outside or another country I, I'm assuming like what I've noticed is that many people don't think that there's so many cultures here in Dubai and I find actually like Dubai doesn't have anything to to like invite to London for example like London is very multicultural yes but here is also very multicultural I feel like if I'm not wrong the community is more like expert, right? Yeah. Like uh, I feel here it's like more of a, um, it's like a cultural hub. Like Latinos yeah. are with Latinos. Yeah. Because uh, it's because of the language thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm assuming like people that come here sometimes not everyone speak English. Si. Uh, also, guys, it's not only Arabic. Yes, of course, like locals speak Arabic, but pretty much all locals speak English. I mean. They learn at school since they are little and it's something really nice because for example if you go to Spain yes you learn at school but you don't really end up like growing up and actually speaking fluent English unless you really like it and then you put effort into it or like you have friends or you move abroad and you're forced to learn it but I noticed that here even just the little kids they already speak English Arabic and English which is impressive you know because definitely not um, an easy language to learn so it's like completely different structure like grammatically with Arabic and, and English right so I've always tried to learn I mean I know a few words I'm not gonna embarrass myself here but um, no, I let's find hear it, let's hear it. <laughs> well I know shukran is very easy right uh, Thank you. yes and then Mabruk congratulations Mabruk, yeah. and yeah. then I know uh, I say, mashallah, well, we know that. <laughs> we know, mashallah is like, is that Latino? We say, oh, yeah. que guapo. Well, it's Spanish, say, que yeah, guapo, yeah. you know? Like, like everything is mashallah, you. you know, good for you. Like, but in a good like, way. Yeah, in a good way, very positive uh, sentence. So, yeah, those kind of things. I think it would be nice to learn it. I don't know if my brain has the capacity. <laughs> I already speak four languages, so I'm like, I could learn it, and it would be really like an achievement, you know, like a goal to learn that because. I feel like uh, Arabic is like English, so many Arabic speaking countries there's so as well, yeah, so let's say me like there's like a Dominican, Spanish, yes, Spanish. so you would say for example, I don't know, somebody from Egypt speak a different Arabic, yeah, yeah. somebody from, I from Iran as well, Iran so it's, it's, just it's, 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 uh, we have dialects as well, but yeah. uh, it's not Arabic okay but so we have locals over here who are Iranian who speak okay Arabic. wow yeah like it's impressive like it's like for us I mean you still understand each other yeah then some words are completely different like in Spanish in uh, you know like Dominicans for example like the dialect there Dominicans love like just coming up with new words you know Huh? It's like Mama Huevo. Mama Huevo, he knows. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, it's like Mama Huevo, que lo que. <laughs> like, you know, it's just uh, very unique to them because obviously uh, people recognize them like anywhere they go. Actually, I saw this video on, uh, it was on Instagram. Uh, and then there was this girl went to Deira, so basically Old Town Dubai. Uh, and then these guys, like they were at the shop, and they were literally speaking. I'm telling you, they have more Dominican accent than what I do. And I was like, so shocked. I think they were from uh, Morocco, but they had the accent like crazy. I was, oh my god, like honestly, what a shame. I don't really speak 
proper like Dominican dialect, you know, but other people do. But yeah, like you say, you know, you see a Dominica and you see a, a Cubano, you recognize them from far, like it's just accent. In between us, like we know. But I think it's easier to learn Spanish when you learn from a South American person. I think uh, I've heard that Mexican Spanish could be easier. Ooh. Mexican? Yeah. Hmm. So Maybe pronunciation? Like, they start off with Mexican Spanish and then they go into like this. Uh, yeah, more like... Um, it just, I think the pronunciation is more straightforward, more easier. I think like if you talk about uh, Spain, you have too many the. Uh, like you know, yeah, you put your tongue in between. It's like uh, it's very fast and slow at the same time. It's yes. Hard to yes. And that's why we say like the Spanish from the south is easier because the Spanish from the south they don't really talk with a Z. And, and I feel like actually when I hear people from, like, for example, from Malaga or or Cadiz, which is south of Spain, it reminds me more of uh, Latino Spanish. It's very easy. And it's like, I don't know, it has a bit of more of a happiness kind of like accent, you know, like when you speak. Nothing against the uh, <laughs> North Spanish, you know. <laughs> Ah, sì, parli italiano e ovviamente la gente mi dice ah, ma tu non sembri italiana ogni volta che vado in Italia mi dicono ah, non sembri italiana e mio padre è siciliano io sono nata a Santo Domingo e niente, ai 12 anni ci siamo spostati in Italia sono cresciuta più o meno la metà della mia vita a Sanremo e e niente, poi ai 19 ho deciso di andare via e me ne sono andata a Londra per 11 anni e da lì niente, i miei poi si sono spostati in Spagna per due anni e, e poi niente, sono tornati di nuovo a Sanremo perché hanno due case lì e io non sono mai più tornata non perché ho qualcosa di negativo di che però io sono una persona che mi piace tipo fare molte cose, lavorare, uscire, fare, secondo me, tipo, se, non so se sapete, però Sanremo, sì, vabbè, a parte che c'è il festival e tutte queste cose, bene, però quando non c'è il festival è un po', un po noioso, non c'è niente da fare, quindi, eh, a parte tipo andare a fare l'aperitivo, queste cose, non, eh, non c'è più altro, cioè, cosa fai? Aperitivo e poi esci al weekend e poi basta. E quindi, niente, sono contenta che sono andata via alla fine, comunque ho ancora amici là, e torno ogni estate, sono là per un mesetto, vado a vedere i miei, eh, i miei fratelli anche e, e niente, adesso sono qua a Dubai, quindi perfetto. Even that, like, I think there are many Italians here. I don't think it's a place for, like, 
in general for everyone because uh, for example Italians love like you know going for aperitivo which is like going for drink in Italy or like believe it or not Italy has a life that is a bit more you know quiet there's no rushing so I think Dubai is, is not for everyone because obviously them, yeah. here is that all about rushing and people like you know working yeah, hard doing many things like yeah exactly Milan is fast you think? Milan yeah I mean not as fast as here I'll probably say maybe Rome is a bit faster, obviously capital, but mm. uh, but yeah, if I had to move back, actually Rome, I would love to go there. Oh, there you go. That's what happens when you do when you do this in, at the beach. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would like to know maybe you know like is there any Italian here? Like it would be nice to connect, but. Um, I feel like obviously my Italian is still pretty good because mm -hmm. I speak with my mom every day. Mm. I mean, it's quite funny because we mix Spanish and Italian, you know? Mm. It's like uh, also Spanglish as well. We do like Spanish, a little bit of English, it's so weird. Um, but yeah, it's just nice that uh, maybe finding people that are from your same upbringing, you know? Do you have any Italian friends or Spanish or? Very rare. No? I think I have a Colombian friend. But ah, Colombian, yeah. Okay. Like even in London, I only had two Italian friends. Mm. In 11 years, I only had two. And I think it's like nothing against like having friends from the same country where you come from. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes you get stuck in that circle, having the same type of people around you. Mm. When actually, I believe a lot, like if you are in a country, you want to mix with other culture, you want to mix with the culture from the country and not just like always the same, if that makes sense, but um, yeah. Now I'm going to go against the hay, just a little bit here. It's, it's fine, it's fine. Ah, it's fine. No problem. Mireya, este ya lo puedes parar, eh? You want to come in the video, it's fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, come speak a little bit. She talks a lot. Actually, talking about Spain, she's from Madrid, so <laughs> she can come and talk a little bit. But I mean, she's how Peruvian, mm -hmm. and uh, she was born in Madrid. The dad is uh, from Madrid, mm -hmm. and the mom is from Peru. But you can tell your story. <laughs> she doesn't want. To. Come. I can come. Hello. Hello everyone there. I'm here be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I'm a Spanish from Madrid, but my mother is Peruvian and I've been also around the world. Well, kind of Spain, UK, now Dubai. I love traveling, so that's why I'm here. Excited to get new adventures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the behind the scenes. <laughs> She's the assistant today. Yeah, I'm the assistant. If they ask for a towel, bring the towel. If they ask for anything, I'm just here taking videos and pictures. She's here for the vibes. Yeah, okay. good vibes and also make sure all the area, no one comes very close. <laughs> so you can have a good image. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like the beach police. Yes, I'm the protector of the video. Well, nice to meet you everyone. <laughs> I hope you know he's going to be just there. Papacito, Perfect, 10 to 10, papacito. Eso. Mira cómo sabe. You mix a lot with your Colombian friend. <laughs> He's a nice like no, ten Watching a lot of uh, videos? Spanish videos, yeah. Oh, really? Well, we we love mixing a lot. Uh, Spanglish, we call mm. it. Yeah. But I don't know. English obviously take you everywhere. With English, you're covered. But also, Spanish is very helpful because mm. you yeah. can go to South America and all these South American are everywhere as well. Mm. So I think there are two languages that are, they are like very powerful. Yeah. Well, let's see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So I'll just clean up a little bit. Hair shave is hard at the beach, guys. Mm -hmm. There's no hot towel here. Can you use the hot towel? The beach water. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> salty water. I want to see that after a uh, oh shave, God. you know? <laughs> That's gonna be like. So bad. Like burning like crazy. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go 
get it in the tub. Now, Mireya, can you pass me the other towel, please? Can you, can you wet this one? Échale agua. Échale agua, por favor. Nice, isn't it? Gracias. Uh, no, I'm gonna use this one for now because uh, just to remove the hair. Solo voy a um, poner el esto. I'm good. And I just want to change it just for the just to line up a little bit of back. Okay, you pay that number of as well? Sure, sure. Just to make it clean. Hopefully you don't fall asleep. <laughs> I shouldn't be making you laugh. <laughs>
So sometimes, I mean, for me, I'm like, some people use the foil just before. I just use it maybe at the end if I see something that is not perfect and, and maybe some long hair in here. Because obviously with the blade, like sometimes you go to another angle and then you see that you left something there. So and I clean it up. How long does it last you normally when you do a head shave? Um, yeah. Maybe a week. One week? One week. Oh, yeah. or one week and a half. Okay. You have just fast then. Yeah. It's good for the video. Yeah. <laughs> so you can do like pretty yeah. much every week one. So how did you come up with the idea? I was watching a lot of people. I don't know if you know Volpe and uh, Eric mm -hmm. Terry, those type of people. Okay. Basically, do like ASMR, where mm -hmm. people cut their hair and okay. they just put it on YouTube for people to watch. Wow. I mean, something quite like, I guess it's you know satisfying mm -hmm. for people because like uh, therapy. therapy, especially yeah. during like the COVID times when people couldn't go to the barber shops, a lot yeah. of people were watching it. Yeah. These type of videos. I can imagine it's just um, you know you know I don't know like mentally probably you know like that people people never thought like that was gonna be an issue like you know <laughs> but hair is a therapy like you know when you go to the hairdresser or you know barber it's like that's like it's a treat you know like you go it makes you feel good it boosts your confidence and so obviously in, during COVID it was crazy. So that's why then my mates were like, oh, can you do my hair? I'm feeling really, you know, I need it. Like, it's like, you literally need it. Like, um, so, yeah, something that maybe before you wouldn't really think about, you know, like, because it's just something like very normal, like common. You're like, okay, yeah, it's just a haircut. Well, it's not just a haircut. It's like the experience that you get from it. Yeah. like the food over here? Yes. <laughs> have you tried? What have you tried? I mean, knowing more like, you know, Turkey, Lebanese, mm. there's a lot of like Turkish and Lebanese. Yeah. I feel like maybe I just need to try more like actual Arabic, like mm. from here. What would you recommend? Like what's the main, one of the main yeah, dishes maybe? It's all the same, mm -hmm. mostly. Similar, uh, no? To the kebabs other one? and Kebab, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But uh, like the local food? It's yeah. not really like a local food, but it's like a UAE type of kids thing. We grew up eating it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the shawarma. Shawarma, yeah. There's uh, karak. I don't know if you can say karak. The karak tea. Karak tea, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah we really love that. It's a lot of sugar, guys, yeah. in there. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. I guess like, 
I mean, let me think. So I really like this place, which is in Old Town. I mean, it's very touristic, but it's touristic, but the food is good. Like it's not a tourist trap. Yeah, you know, like uh, it's called the Heritage Russian. It's a um, I don't know. Maybe you can add it in there. It's called Heritage Restaurant or the Arabian Tea House. It's a chain, mm -hmm. and uh, the food is amazing. But not only the food is like the decor is really nice. Like it's proper like you know Middle Eastern Arabic kind of decor. And it's just like so nice, and I don't know. The food is great, and the price is amazing. Like this is one thing that I noticed. Many so people, Dubai and then the yes, Dubai. exactly. So I'm like, many people think, oh, you know, you come here, you're gonna spend a lot of money. It depends what you're looking for. Yeah. Like, you have uh, the nice, the nice thing about here is that you have options. So you can go to cheap places, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna be bad. Like, you know, uh, the food is amazing. Pretty Sometimes much. Sometimes it's even better than the expensive places. Yeah, because they're authentic, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, it's just I mean, it depends. You can do from bougie to you know just something very simple even um there's this indian restaurant in a uh i think it's called a satwa satwa yeah and it's a uh, rabbis i think you probably know so it's a very popular place uh, i mean i don't really know the whole story but basically when they started uh, adidas made them like yeah, a pair yeah, yeah, of yeah, sneakers place, yeah. with a uh, color brand mm -hmm. and uh that became very famous but I think it was one of the first maybe Russia yes, Indian Russian yeah and it's incredible like I wouldn't say Indian is my favorite food but like when I went there I was surprised I was like in love pretty much very similar to like Latinos but like, there's rice involved all the time <laughs> there's bread as well and the, you know it's just obviously chicken and stuff so just different spices but still kind of like the base is the same uh, so I would 100% recommend 100%. Latinos like spicy? I mean... Uh, it's mostly spicy over in the Indian stuff. Yeah, like spices as in like flavor spices or the spice like, mm, like hot? Yeah, in terms of both. Both? I mean, yeah, we say like anything we make like for example in Dominican Republic, mm. it has to have sazon. Sazon is, you know... <laughs> sazon is seasoned. Exactly, so... But you mean sazon in terms of like the feeling sazon or like... Actual sasson. Actual sasson, like you know, just like if you do uh, like chicken, or yeah. meat, you need to marinate in the mm. sasson so that it takes the flavor. Like we don't like any any of this like sour. Or yeah, yeah, like you know, so we have to have like really a lot of flavor to it. Mm. And I guess uh, that's the similarity similarity with uh, Indian food, for example, or mm. like Arabic food, right? You have so many spices, like you use cardamom as well when you cook and all of that. So pretty much similar. And then it's like the base for us is always rice. Yeah. Like rice everywhere, pretty much. So yeah, we grew up like that. So I guess there is a lot of um, similarities. Similarities. Yeah. I mean, we yeah for Dominicanos we say like pica pollo is the best, you know. Pica pollo is fried chicken. Mm. It's not your fried chicken from KFC. Mm. It's actual fried chicken. <laughs> like it has flavor. Like it's just amazing. We um. We eat it with uh, tostones. Mm, uh, it's like plantain. a bread? Plantain. Oh, plantain, okay. Yeah. So we eat it with tostones and just make sure that we fry it. Uh, just put some aguacate and extra if you want as well. Uh, yes. And we like things that have flavor, that's the thing. you shave and then you have like a mm -hmm. line in your beard so you can make sure that it's nice and neat.
you want to line up at the bottom or? Yeah, fine. All right, I think we are done. Just going to come off the shade. done. Perfect. Finito. <laughs> Terminamos, pero él habla español, eh? He, he pretends that he speaks. <laughs> Imagine if I said something to my friend that I didn't want him to understand. <laughs> you never know, guys. Never know. All right, so, thank you so uh, much. Anything you want to tell the people? Maybe yeah. Check yourself out on um, Instagram and yeah. So my Instagram is uh, Dominican Blades um, dot AF. And yeah, if you need anything, you're in Dubai or doesn't need to be just for barbering, like you know, just uh, a connection. I'm very uh, friendly person. I mean, typical Latino. You know, we speak to anyone. We like, like to mingle with new cultures and stuff. So yeah, just hit me up on Instagram and I'll be happy to talk to you guys. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. And and Mirejita! <laughs> Thank bye you bye. guys! <laughs>